Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of our nonprofit organization, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation, our THCF, and its affiliated political committee, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp, or CRRH. Tonight uh, is our uh, 500th show. If you're watching on uh, August 14th, you can call us and ask questions here shortly about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, and helping medical marijuana patients. Be taking your phone calls. We have some video clips we play and some musical accompaniment. But without further ado, let's bring out our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. Tomorrow is our big Seattle Hemp Fest, and we're gearing up for that. And every year the Seattle Hemp Fest has existed, uh, every year, Mr. Tim Pate, who plays here, uh, has opened both stages. And he'll be doing that, uh, uh, opening the main stage. So uh, we'll be taking a call shortly, but let's go to Mr. Tim Pate. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I wrote this many years ago with some help from someone else, and uh, every year I get to play it at the Seattle Hemp Fest. It's one of the reasons I I, uh, I, I keep playing it is is because it, it has a message for me as, as as much as it does for everybody there. Uh, some folks have said it's uh, the Hemp National Anthem. I don't know about that, but uh, uh, it's a song that I love to play about this time of year because it means what this is why we're doing all this. It's called Let's All Be Farmers. <laughs> Well, let's all be farmers and save the trees one acre of hemp. Save the forest trees. Let's all be farmers. The rich will be rich and stay. Stop. This is the new, the old, the original, all billion dollar crop. Let's all be farmers and save the seas. Oil without crude. Yeah, here, hip oil is clean. All oh, let's all be farmers. In the Exxon's rain, I can grow my own oil, thank you. And without the pain, let's all be farmers. And now that you know, well, who am I to tell you all oh, what you should grow? Let's all be farmers. Let's all be farmers. Oh, and as we watch on oh, the last tree fall, what will the cry be we got them? Oh, we could have had them all. Let's all be farmers. Farmers. Oh, 
I was just pondering whether it was 1996 or 1997 when we first started doing this show. Mm -hmm. But about show number four or five, I was having trouble stuttering on by myself on every show. <laughs> and Paul Loney first came in to join me. I think it was about show four or five or six or something. And it was show four. Yeah, show four. And you were there through about show 125 or so. or Something like that. I don't remember yeah, when. So but... we were co-hosts. And then about show 80 or so, 75 maybe, mm. then Dr. Philip Levesque joined us there. and I mm -hmm. came in at, sh at show number 310. Oh. Number 310, so you've been <laughs> at 190 <laughs> shows so far. Yeah. We've been doing this. This is show number 500, a historical mark for us. We've got this cake. I'll see if we can get uh, camera two to close in. Specially made by... Uh, Red, I guess a, a, a local bakery produced it. Happy 500th show. Ta-da. Ta -da. <laughs> so if you're out there and you have a question for us tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We'll be taking your calls about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, and helping medical marijuana patients. Yeah, I, I, when we started doing it, little did we know this would keep going for yeah. 500 shows. Well, I'd hoped that by now we wouldn't need to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We certainly were trying yeah. back then. You look back, and all the first shows are all about the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act that's petition. Right. And as everything comes back again, that's about what we're getting ready to, to launch for, yeah. for 2010. The Oregon so, Cannabis Tax Act. Petition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I think that's going to be a good one. The time is right. So yeah. It certainly finally, seems that way. Ten years, twelve years later. You know, we did some polling. Uh, we filed it last year, and we did some polling and found that uh, there was an antipathy toward the liquor store system. Mm. And putting it in the liquor stores seemed to be something that was going to make us lose. And so, after doing the polling, we decided to pull it and revise it, and we've got two different versions: one with industrial hemp and one without industrial hemp. And so we're going forward. Now you've got to get in Oregon, get a thousand sponsorship signatures yeah. before you can get a ballot title now. So once we have the two ballot titles, we're going to poll on those. And then based on the poll, we're going to move forward with one and try to put it on the ballot to end adult marijuana prohibition and uh, help medical marijuana patients. How many signatures do you have so far on the thousand out of the thousand? I think about five or six hundred. I mean, I'm not Good. counting them or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a couple different people gathering, but we certainly use some more help. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of them at the Hip Fest because yeah. even though it's in Seattle, yeah. a lot of a lot folks of from Oregon, Oregon come yesterday. up there. There's no doubt about that. Yep. So, and if you're out there and you'd like to help us by uh, signing the petition, come on down to our office at 105 Southeast 18th Avenue. And uh, you can come in and sign that petition if you're a registered Oregon voter. You have to be a registered Oregon voter to be able to, to do that. So how are you doing there, Paul? I'm, I'm doing good. I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to be here, you know, number 500. I just keep, like I said, you know, it was, I think all the early shows are all about Okta. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to, Okta or the Oregon Harm Reduction Act, which another one that uh, we're both hoping that somehow we can get going so yeah I mean it's the time is right I mean it's like back then it was easier to, to get a ballot title you didn't have to yeah. go through this initial 1000 but I think like you say the times on our in now that people are on our side the polling's there Calif you know the California polling looks good the West yeah. Coast polling they did looks good so yeah I'm pretty excited about it. how are you doing Dr. Levesque well welcome um, back to quite quite well actually um, I'm um, uh, writing articles about medical marijuana on um, salem-news.com and I have one of them in front of me right now the title is medical marijuana the replacement for very dangerous drugs and it has received actually hundreds of responses to this I'm looking at right now uh, an outfit called dig you, you know yeah dig is a way to, to point out news stories that are popular and, on the and, internet. And uh, 
for, for this article on Dig, there was 166 responses. Ah, yeah. that's a lot. And and they like it. Uh huh. But um, well, the Salem-News.com folks are really taking off. Tim and Bonnie King are doing some great work down there. We're getting about 15,000 hits a day. Yeah, which ain't bad. Excellent. Yeah, it's it's really moving forward. I know they're producing a special on PTSD, right? That's that's right. Uh, they made arrangements with. Uh, uh, Channel 10, OPB, and they believe that once uh, Portland buys it, that everybody else is going to buy it too. Uh -huh. And they're heading towards California right now to interview, I don't know, several hundreds, or maybe, I don't know how many people, uh, real PTSD victims, uh, veterans of the various and sundry wars. But the whole thing it is that there is probably the... U.S. government, uh, VA estimates 300,000, but I think it's closer to a million. Mm -hmm. and, and well, you were right there at the front lines of war, too, so you know exactly what it's well, like. Well, that, that is exactly right. it. Uh, the whole thing is that uh, it seems that many people think that PTSD is a certain thing like this. Well, it's not. It ranges from um, stage one to stage ten. Stage tens are the guys that commit suicide, mm -hmm. and there's a mm -hmm. lot of them too, uh, yeah. far more than there should be. But um, uh, I've been writing articles about that. I've got uh, 50 articles on SalemDaysNews.com and 27 videos. And uh, anybody who knows how to use a computer, punch up Philip Levesque, you'll find me and. Go for it. Or go to Salem-News.com. That's another great resource. I know sure. for our longtime viewers, I'm sure they recall, but Dr. Levesque uh, was in Patton's army. So you helped <laughs> cross the Rhine and, and marched into Germany there yes, as a, yes, uh, a dog-faced soldier, as I recall, uh, a scout in the infantry, which was a pretty dangerous line of work in well, World War One uh, Or two, two. Thank you. <laughs> as thank I go to one. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I was a scout and point man and forward observer, which are suicide missions. Yeah. My best day, me and a buddy captured 26 Nazi officers. And I had to change my underwear after that. <laughs> but uh, at least I brought them in. Um, I, I wanted to mention that, you know, this is, this is really great for the three of us because this is, this is, the, this is the way I started with with this, mm. and then uh, of course when when it was legalized for medical purposes, I wasn't the first doctor who signed an application, but I had patients number thirteen and fourteen, mm -hmm. and I was the first doctor who signed fifty applications, the first doctor who signed a hundred, the first doctor who signed a thousand, mm -hmm. and at that time the next person had signed seventy one. Mm -hmm. And I went to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and actually I think I saw more than 6,000 patients altogether. You know, we wouldn't be here where we are today so, without your assistance, well, and I'm always <laughs> eternally grateful for you that. Got, you got me and my first too, license. You were yeah. my doctor. How yeah. many out in the audience got patients but cards from me? Right on. Hey, There's a whole bunch of them few, out there. There's a whole few, bunch great. of them out there. Well, I think they're up to, what, 20,000 card holders now or something like 22,000? Uh, actually, there's 22,000 patients. Card, card, 22,000 cardholder patients. In Oregon. And 5,000 pending. That's just amazing. Oh, wow. So they'd be up to well, close to 30,000. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing about it is that the state marijuana office has never issued their cards within 30 days. I know. Never. Even I know. though that's what the regulations the say. The regulations require to. that. And the well, every other state runs into that problem, too, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. And we know of one person who had to wait 90 excuse me, not 90 days, nine months before he got his card because it fell under some furniture and they didn't look for it. <laughs> and so he got a free ride for nine months. Yeah, exactly. That's what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that saved him some money and, and the state lost a few pennies there, but, mm. you know, they've got enough probably. <laughs> yeah. I know they've always operated with a big surplus, yeah. and at one point they took $900,000 mm -hmm. of patient money and applied it to the... Uh, overall general fund uh, well, so they are taxing the sick and dying yeah, uh, medical marijuana patients to support the government they were taxing the sick sick and wounded people that's right <laughs> you know you were talking about PTSD I know the Israeli army has been using medical marijuana for PTSD for about six years now yep. in California thousands of patients have 
medical marijuana pay permits for PTSD. And the state of New Mexico just added PTSD, Good. well, about six months ago, added PTSD to their list of conditions for which medical marijuana can and, be recommended. Canada is, is also using P, uh, cannabis for PTA, PTSD veterans also. Yeah. So yeah, well, right. I think, too, it's good to point out that it's not just veterans of wars oh, right. that, you know, suffer from PTSD, mm -hmm. that, you know, um, crime victims, anybody so, that's been in a, like a horrible car accident even, they also could qualify under I spent PTSD. 17 years, yeah. I spent well, 17 years in the crisis business myself uh, yeah. as chairman of the board of directors at Whitebird and Eugene and, and served, you know, another one in, in, in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And and you're right. Uh, and a lot of the, the people that I, I worked with over the years were PTSD. And, and many of them were veterans, but many of them were not. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, good point. Well, one of our associates, Don Dupay, is was a police detective in Portland, and he is a severe PTSD victim. So yeah, you see a lot of he dead had to, bodies he, that can. Uh, he had to quit. He had to quit being a detective because he couldn't do it any longer. Right. You know, we have a caller here. We're taking live phone calls, so if you want to call us tonight, call us at 503-288-4448. Hello, caller. You are on our show. Paul, I am very honored to be the first caller to congratulate you on your 500. Right on. Show. Right on. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're uh, just proud to be here. I'm so happy to have a couple old uh, cohorts back for a guest visit here. Oh, yeah. And I thought Tim was going to be up in Seattle. I was surprised to hear his, his guitar <laughs> his guitar going there. Yeah, well, he'll be up there in the morning, ready to open wait. both stages. I always wait because of the parties that are, you know, that happen on Friday night. I don't want to do that because I'm supposed to be the opening act, and so I <laughs> save all my energy for that. I don't leave until early Saturday morning on that for that reason. Tim, Tim, yes. hopefully you have a designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always my designated driver. A anyway, a, a little story about me. I, I got my permit uh, a while back, and. Uh, the funny thing, when I went over in the Lloyd Center, when you had to uh, you had to get a parking permit, my time stamp on my parking permit was 4:20. So that was kind of <laughs> right on. telling. But one of one of the things uh, that happened recurred in my life is you have these rules, you have these regulations, and then you have people that lie to you. Mm. And 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 we have a Congress that's fighting over this health bill. And all these people are being given lies. And, and you know the history about marijuana and, and all the lies that started back in the early 1900s. Sure. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed in seeing that, that the people of America cannot, cannot determine what, what is truth and what is a, is a lie. And, and I'm, I'm disappointed in that seeing what's going on with the health care reform is mm -hmm. going to hurt us because – People cannot see what the truth is and, 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 and what the reality is. Who is against marijuana and who is against it? You know, the drug companies and, and all of the other manufacturers. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty outrageous. You know, we're going to try to make them come out of the woodwork when we put our proposal to end adult marijuana prohibition on the ballot. Mm -hmm. They're going to come out. We'll see uh, exactly who they are and what kind of resources they're willing to put toward this battle. But uh, we're braced and, and preparing for uh, the battle next year, and I just hope we can get enough signatures to put this thing on the ballot and come up with a vote next year, see what the people of Oregon think. You know, they uh, continually, uh, a lot of these commercials out there putting down health care for all and scaring people into thinking they're going to have some commissions determining who's going to live and who's going to die. Uh, it, it just diverts attention from the real issue, which is the, the 50 million Americans who don't have any health care at all and uh, what that costs everybody when they have to go in for health care uh, and the hospitals have to support them and take it out of all their other bills. Do you want to say something? Tim? I do. Yeah, I, I think he's making a really good point too that uh, we're combating seventy years of propaganda against us. Yeah. And, you know, and, and this propaganda is, was instilled in our grandparents. Right. And so, uh, you know, our parents and, 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 and talk us, to our children and, and dare. Exactly. So, I mean, we're we're fighting something that's taken a long time to build up, and and uh, I'm not surprised that the, all of those the, there's a lingering doubt out there in the community because of what we're trying 
trying to attempt here uh, is, is just bring the truth about you know a very important plant to us, obviously, uh, and we've learned that truth over time. But uh, there's a lot of people out there who just haven't been exposed to that at all, and that all they've been exposed to is the propaganda. And so, yeah, we're you make a good point. It's taken a long time to get to this level, and, and it's going to take us a while to get back to where we, you know, the pendulum is swinging, though, in our favor now. That's what tomorrow and then this weekend in Seattle is all about. I mean, there'll be 300,000 people there. And uh, when we started, there were 3,000 people. So, uh, you know, it's definitely a hundredfold now what it started as. And, and I, I think that the, the propaganda in our favor has been building in that same way over time. Uh, and, you know, this show is obviously a part of that. But uh, uh, the, the reports come in on a daily basis now all of, from all over the world, uh, the positive impact that marijuana has. And uh, uh, 15 years ago, we didn't have that much anecdotal evidence. I remember reading the first DEAs when the, you know, they took it to the administrative law judge to, to try and approve marijuana or change the scheduling. Uh, and that anecdotal evidence was, was minor compared to what it is now. It, the, it would fill a room, uh, this room or more, and this is a big room. Yeah, well, I just want to say one of the things that we l need to do um, is not just counteract their propaganda, but we need to be good role models. Exactly. Because too often in the past, we fell into their trap of propaganda. We, we pretend we were Cheech and Chong. You know, we'd act stupid in public. Mm -hmm. when we, you right. know, but no, you have to be respectful and responsible and let people know. It's like, hey, you know, I'm just like any other responsible adult out there. And, uh, you know, I'm not just some cartoon figure. And, and uh, we prefer cannabis to uh, getting drunk and um, alcohol. Yep and yep. find it a lot more pleasant experience and so uh, obviously our intuition led us toward this to start with but the science really is 100 percent behind us in terms of you know there's if you use marijuana you're less likely to have lung cancer than someone who doesn't use anything at all you're likely to live longer it increases your longevity so uh, marijuana really is a miracle plant it produces more fiber more protein and more oil than any other plan on this planet. So to criminalize that to me seems truly evil. And as I've said many times on the show, and I'll say it one last time, or one more time anyway, that marijuana prohibition is not really about drugs. It's not about marijuana. It's about money and the continued centralization of economic and political control. And the sooner that we end adult marijuana prohibition, the sooner we'll decentralize our economy and return some control to farmers, like you were singing about there, Tim. Yeah, I mean, and it's about freedom. I think a lot of our yeah. early shows, we talked about that a lot. It's about freedom. People should have the freedom to alter their brain chemistry for pure recreation. Um, yeah. It's not just all about, you know, because the, the percentage of patients, of, of overall marijuana consumers, patients is just a small slice mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But the recreational users, that's the majority, and, and it's all about freedom. And I, when I talk to uh, conservatives out there, I say, well, what do you have against freedom? And... <laughs> they kind of have to stop and think, you know, some, well, I guess I don't have anything against freedom. Because if they come back and say, well, it's just wrong, I say, well, I guess you don't believe in freedom then. As long as it's just my kind of freedom, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to ask the audience something. How many of you have seen the movie Reaper Madness? Of course, all of our audience raises their hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. How many times? Yes. 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 How many people here own a copy? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I bet I've seen it more times than anybody else. Yeah. When I was a grad student at the medical school, I was an instructor, and I had to, the class was divided in two, two parts. And for three years, I had to sit in the room with, the, with half of the class to watch Reaper Madness so that the students wouldn't laugh out loud or leave the room. <laughs> so I've seen it six times. And is there anybody can beat it six times? Oh, I'm sure I can. Hey! <laughs> hey, I'm proud of you. <laughs> but I am one of those who own my own copy, too. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, thank you, Paul, for your, for your comments. And, and I just wish that when people are listening to these, these lies out there, they look at how mm. much the pockets of the individuals are lined with with opposing money so very true. good point unfortunately so a lot of our opponents are largely motivated by economics and so uh, uh that's one of the major factors we have to overcome but uh you know the truth always wins out in the end you know and hopefully and all, uh it'll all, be our life within our lifetimes 
And for all those Boise State fans out there, go Boise. <laughs> all right. I'm sure uh, Russ Belleville is cheering for you somewhere out there. Yeah, I'm what's, sure he what's is. What's that about Boise? Boy, uh, some some Boise State team must be doing pretty well if that's what he's talking about. I don't really know myself. Well, I got a phone call from an attorney in Idaho a couple of days ago that w- wanted to know what they're going to do is to challenge the the Idaho laws about medical marijuana as a medical necessity or whatever the alternative. I'm sure there are a number of patients that mm-hmm. really sure need are. it there. Well, and so. I, I know because I had patients that were semi-registered in Ontario, Oregon, that mm-hmm. actually came from Idaho. Yeah, yeah, we have them in Spokane and Missoula who come, <laughs> come to our clinics there so they can get a permit, even though it doesn't really do them any good in, uh, in Idaho. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah. So it this goes. This is the strangest thing I've ever been in in my life. If you have a question or comment for us tonight, feel free to call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We're gearing up for tomorrow's Seattle Hemp Fest, which is the largest pro-marijuana rally in the world. Uh, a lot of Russ Balville and Madeline Martinez are already there. Are you going to be going, Paul? Or uh, No, I just got back in town, so I've got to stay in You're going to relax a little yes. bit? What about you, Dr. Levesque? Um, I was going to ask you... I thought they had a hemp fest in Ann Arbor. Oh, that's the the hash bash in Ann Arbor, yeah. How many people do they draw there? Well, you know, it's not as many as in past years. I think this year we had a booth at the hash bash in Ann Arbor, (laughs) and I think I was told about 2,000 people. Then it goes on, it's a little smoke out for about an hour and a half, and then it joins some other street fair uh, that takes place (laughs) there for an even larger crowd. Well, I was told about 100,000 people, though. No, no, no there's not that many people yeah, at the yeah. Hash Bash this year. <laughs> uh, outside of Seattle, the next largest marijuana protest, one time 50,000 people came to watch the Black Crows play in Atlanta, Georgia uh, festival. There's an annual festival in Boston, the mm-hmm. Boston Freedom Rally, yep. that uh, has about fifty to 75,000 people if the weather's good. And then uh, in Madison, Wisconsin, there's the Great Midwest Marijuana Harvest Fest, which has been drawing uh, fifteen to 20,000 people since the early 90s. It's kind of interesting. It starts on the campus of the University of Wisconsin, marches down a little street mall there right to the Capitol, and then uh, they play music for a couple of days on the, the lawn of the Wisconsin State Capitol, which is a lot of fun. So basically that makes Hemp Fest the biggest. By far. And Hemp Stock the third. Yep, we're right up there. Our Hemp Stock Festival is coming up on uh, September 12th and 13th. Mm-hmm. So we're gearing up for that. I know you folks will be there as well. I think we have a caller, though. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello? Hello. Hi, this is John. Hey, John. Hey, yeah. I was calling about, I have two questions. All right. Yeah. Um, they have 15, you can grow 15 plants in Washington. Yes. Yeah. I guess, but. Why hasn't Oregon done the same? Well, Oregon's law is you can have six flowering plants and 18 little babies. So in Oregon, you can have 24 plants, but only six of them have no restrictions on the height or maturity level of the plant. 18 of those plants have to be shorter or uh, not wider than one foot. Now, Oregon's law was changed first. And so when the Washington Medical I mean, the health department started holding hearings a couple of years ago. You know, they got to hear input. I, I wrote some input for their uh, uh, determination as well, and I had recommended that they go with 24 plants and 24 ounces with 12 plants budding and 12 plants uh, immature and take out that size restriction. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they went forward with uh, the same limit of dry marijuana. So both in Oregon and Washington, you can have 24 ounces or a medical patient who has a permit can have 24 ounces, but there's a difference in the number of plants. Are they ever going to try to change that for Oregon? You know, there's always moves to change it. We are trying to change it with our Cannabis Tax Act to just make where anybody can grow it for themselves. You know, if we get our petition on the ballot and we win the election, anyone will be able to grow it with no license whatsoever. And you only need a license if you want to sell it. And if you do want to sell it, it'll have to be through cannabis only stores that only cater to people over the age of 21 and so uh, yeah we're definitely trying to change it great and insurance 
Is this stuff ever going to get covered on insurance? Because it's medicine. Some, I have known several people who've aspects. had insurance settlements from robberies and mm -hmm. things like that. I also know other people who've been turned down. So some insurance policies will pay uh, for medical marijuana if it's stolen, where others won't. And sometimes the same company will have different determinations depending on who it is making the ruling. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just hoping they could cover some of our expenses with insurance. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, you can take it off your taxes. Yeah, some insurance companies you will can. allow patients to uh, uh, to deduct some of their expenses mm -hmm. and, and pay for their medical marijuana doctor fees. That's right. And like he said, if you meet the criteria for a medical deduction with the IRS, you can deduct uh, everything you spend uh, to grow marijuana, including well, the rent I, on that portion of your I home. I would, uh, as a lawyer... I would be very, very careful about putting that because the federal <laughs> government doesn't recognize the right. well, I've known value. So, I mean, you know. Hundreds of patients who well, receive that deduction. Yes, yes, but that doesn't mean they weren't audited. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so if you want to be safe, only put down your doctor visit, um, the cost of going to Paul's clinic. Don't put down the cost of your lights and fertilizer and soil because um, you're asking for trouble. That's a farm expense. Last question. Go ahead. I, I thought they had a patent on hemp. Uh, nope, there are no patents. There, there are a couple of U.S. government patents on cannabinoids that were recently filed over the past uh, five to six years by the Health uh, and Human Services Department. Uh, so the federal government actually has patents on THC and CBD for use in cancer and pain. But... Uh, uh, so far, they haven't made any moves to try to enforce those patents. Oh, okay. So, go hemp. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, here in Oregon, we passed an industrial hemp bill, and the yes, governor signed it into law, so now Oregon becomes the sixth state to have passed an industrial hemp law, but they're waiting for the federal government to make a change in the law. I know Representative Barney Frank and uh, Ron Paul of Massachusetts and Texas, respectively, both, have introduced a uh, industrial hemp bill that would allow the federal, allow the government to license industrial hemp. We have a All right, well, audience. thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a good night. You too. Let's see if we can get that microphone on. We have a question from the audience. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, actually, someone asked me about cannabis specifically rather than a cannabinoid as being patented, and it turns out that the Department of Health Services has a patent that specifically is for cannabis rather than a cannabinoid uh, and its use as a neuroprotectant and antioxidant. Right. Um, yeah, I, I've seen those patents, mm -hmm. too. It seems to me that, uh, you know, there are a number, I think there's this term where they grandfather in drugs that were in the pharmacopoeia in 1909. Mm -hmm. Cannabis definitely was in that group of people. So how they can patent a plant that was included in the, the old pharmacopoeia seems well, kind of disingenuous. I think they're saying that since they've genetically manipulated it in some ways, right. so it's not the same one from 1909. And they definitely weren't pushing it for its antioxidant properties in 1909. <laughs> no. Or for its neuroprotective properties. No. I don't think that was an issue way back when, but you just never know. Nope. <laughs> you know, a lot. we talk about the term uh, hippies. And I look back in, uh, God forbid, in the in the old dictionary uh, from that time, early 1905 mm. or so, back then they were called hempies. They had a definition for hempies as being kind of a countercultural <laughs> person. So it seems that uh, the hippies might have come out of the hempies, or the well, you know, it could be. But it's also one of the reasons they, you know, outlawed it is to, you know, put down that rebellion. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, there used to be opium dens in Portland. And uh, a uh, opium addict, I guess you could call it, when he was smoking his pipe, he was on his hip. Oh, really? Down on his hip. Mm -hmm. And so if you were hipped, you were smoking opium. Yeah. Ah, I've been in those opium tins. 
down huh? in the underground here in Portland. I've been in the underground, yeah. and they are eerie down there. They really are. <laughs> but, yeah, he's right. Like they're little Pendleton bitty too. rooms, and they're just pallets, you know, laid up on yeah. all, you know. Oh, no. But, you, yeah, it's like yeah. if you go to the uh, the new federal courthouse in downtown Portland, mm -hmm. and the little display capsule where they dug up the, the ground there, there are some old opium jars that they show that. <laughs> right on. You know, they call it Chinese pottery. Right. But <laughs> it's <laughs> We have a, another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. Howdy. Hey, uh, hey Paul. This is uh, Brent from Kentucky again. I'm calling. Hey, before. right on. Welcome <laughs> back, Kentucky. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I had a question for the doctor actually tonight. Um, just this week, I had my fifth doctor in the last five years tell me that you know medical marijuana would probably be the best thing for me because of my pain and the back surgeries surgeries I've had the nerve damage, and I have muscle spasms and uh, cramps also. Um, before there was a medical law, what would you tell your patients? I mean, they're basically telling me that I should move out of the state because it's never going to happen here. And I'm just wondering what you would tell your patients before there was a medical law. Do you live in Kentucky? Yes, I do. You do? Well, that's really strange because... Kentucky is in the top five for the growing of marijuana. And well, uh, yeah, I know. But it's illegal. <laughs> it's, the, it's but it's yeah, illegal but it's and illegal. they sell it for it's the illegal, price of gold. It's illegal and they sell it on New York City. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't help you much right now. Um, but uh, good question. Well, well, actually, um, the the medical profession has been uh, very uh, what's the right word? Um, Recalcitrant. Recalcitrant, I guess that's the right word. Um, up until up until 1937, it was uh, quite widely used, uh, and um, Anslinger and the Hearst uh, newspapers uh, decided that it was the blacks and the Hispanics that were mostly using it. Well, that was incorrect because the white college kids in New Orleans were smoking it also in the jazz clubs down there. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was okay for the blacks and the Mexicans and so forth, but it wasn't so good for the white folks. So that's why they passed this law. A yeah. And, and uh, what this ended up w was a hell of a lot of uh, alcoholics because mm -hmm. alcohol is the, is the poor man's tranquilizer medicine. And so we had a lot of people die. Well, lots of people die from alcoholism and cirrhosis of the liver and so forth. Uh, I don't know how many hundred thousand a year, something like that. But but uh, um, I I have had patients that have been using marijuana for sixty years. So uh, and and I asked one of them, you know, when, where where did you where did you start doing this or something? And he says, my grandmother used to smoke it in a pipe. <laughs> well, so so that must have been at least a hundred years ago. So it's, it's cr crazy business. And they didn't mention a thing about Kentucky, but I think that's where they came from. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we had one of the biggest industrial, hemp, yes. you know, during the war yeah, and prior yeah. to that, we were really yeah. well known for our hemp. And, yeah. and, and they act, I think we're one of the states that actually has one of the hemp laws. We're just waiting for the gov federal government. But, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't a single bill this year in the legislation down here for medical marijuana. And, you know, I've written to all the legislators, and, and they all give me the same, well, you know, there's no medical value. And it's just like when I have doctors telling me I should use it and I need to just move out of the state because it's never going to happen here, is that something I really should consider? Well, we're getting more and more states all the time. Uh, I think, uh, Paul... Yeah, Michigan now is just north of you a little ways, and there's talk yeah. in, in Illinois and in Wisconsin of passing a bill. Uh, they're very close to passing one in New Jersey as well, so uh, it's moving. Yeah, it is. We've we've seen a, a lot of progress, and uh, we've opened uh, several clinics and seeing patients in nine different cities in Michigan right now. So uh, uh, we're yeah. happy to say that we're able to help more and more people. But still, you know, 13 is a small number out of the 50 states, and there's only 13 medical marijuana states right now. And if all three of the others I talked about, Illinois. Wisconsin and New Jersey at it this year, then that just brings us up to 16 still. Do they have a moonshine down in Kentucky? Uh, 
<laughs> no, but they still call them bootleggers, and they're the guys that go in all the dry counties. They go mm-hmm. like to uh, Tennessee and pick up alcohol and bring it back up, and they still call those guys bootleggers. Uh. But um, I haven't seen any still, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but I'm, sure I'm really considering after five years just saying forget it and just move my family, sell you. my house, and well, get you. to a state that's more compassionate. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say that um, if you talk to a lawyer there, because I would uh, check out what your medical necessity the defenses are in Kentucky, if any, and then mm-hmm. uh, and then make sure and then talk to one of these doctors and see if they're willing to testify if you ever get arrested. Because mm-hmm. I have it all okay. lined up. So in case something does happen. Okay. I'm willing okay. to testify. He, this <laughs> doctor done, testifies more than any other doctor. I've, I've, been, I've been in marijuana cases 15 times and won 14 out of the 15 cases. <laughs> there you well, go. then I'll be calling you first. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you All right. Go. Well, thanks for well, your thank, phone call. Thank you And we'll hear much. from you again, Brent, I'm sure, as you're All watching right, us bye-bye. online. You're on watching us on Ustream.tv? I guess that means yes. And then somewhere we're live on Ustream.tv, and like it says right there on the screen. We are going to run a little film clip about the Seattle Hemp Fest right now. So uh, we'll be back in just a moment, so stay tuned. Tune in. marijuana thing is getting out of hand it's all contradictory if we were to take a look back at our history and rewind time i'm telling we will find the founding fathers all decided to sign the declaration of independence while wearing clothing made by him i'm like wow aren't we supposed to be like george washington thomas jefferson benjamin franklin i am thinking this discrepancy is kind of strong not to mention michael phelps will beat you in a race and still hit the bong do you see my point shit even Barack obama went and passed around a joint to really understand but this is my life i represent man all i gotta say is they want to control all we need to say is we don't fit the mold because this is my right i've got to be free how you done that see to oppress rule control is the regime to back go on every avenue and every street handcuffs and court dates for grams of weed officer please oh mercy me i'm no murder and thief i just chong and cheech what you want to keep is far from peace the war on the streets brings more to eat at what cost silly lives lost trying to prove who's boss but it's all about dollars and cents but it don't make sense ever since hemp and cannabis became such a hit they don't even try to really understand but this is my life i represent man all i gotta say is they want to control all we need to say is we don't fit the mold because this is my right i've got to be free how you gonna outlaw civil liberties man it's more than just weed 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 Mary wanna take a trip to the pharmacist Arthritis in my hips but no prescription Painful conditions but no admissions Because my job description can't afford physicians No insurance but the pain I'm enduring is recurring Or just give me codeine and some more morphine I'm a walking zombie, insomnia and nausea Please, I just need a little weed And maybe it's this 88 HD. Now I'm dependent on Ritalin, depressed with no self-esteem. Too many drugs, I can't even think and just think. Mary wanna help me.
Well, that's a nice promo for the Hemp Fest. That's a nice song. Now, you're going to be giving that guitar away this here. This is this year's grand prize. Is that going to be on uh, Saturday or Sunday? As most of you know, this uh, every year I've been able to give away uh, uh, some type of guitar. And this year, this is a brand-new 12-string Yamaha, and it was donated by uh, Trade Up Music here in Portland. And we will be giving it away, but it will be covered in autographs from everybody on main stage, all the dignitaries and luminaries that show up there every year. And so we're going to be giving this away on Sunday at uh, uh, 4 o'clock. Well, actually, we're going to be calling out the numbers at 4 o'clock. We're going to try and give it away at 420 if we get a winner. And usually the people are <laughs> pretty quick to come up and claim it if they, you know, they've got it. But uh, I, I've heard uh, the rumor that Christopher Walken, the movie star, is going to help me give this away this year. So uh, I'm truly looking forward to that. So anyway, if you're going to be at the Seattle Hymn Fest this year, uh, National Normal uh, and uh, Seattle Hymn Fest is holding a raffle for this guitar and some other prizes that we have. And I think they're only a do I, I know for a fact they're only a dollar a piece so uh if you're out there look for somebody and and uh you know go for it uh it should be a lot of fun uh yeah it shines it's shiny it's brand new it's really a pretty guitar it sounds really nice i haven't played it very much yet i'm waiting for the 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 owner to show up <laughs> right. and i'm sure that they will uh I, uh, I'd like to also invite you all to come out. Uh, my band is going to be open to main stage both days uh, from uh, 11 to noon, and then we're also closing the Hymposium stage. So, uh, we've is got, that on uh, Saturday or Sunday? You'll Saturday be evening, we'll all be closing the Hymposium stage at 7 from 7 to 8. And uh, we're, uh, we've been rehearsing a lot. Now, Russ Belleville will be joining me. John uh, Cornette will also be joining me. And, uh, and, and Kenny Davis, uh, Russ's uh, brother-in-law, will, right. will, will uh, join us on drums and we've been working real hard to try and put on a good show we'll see what happens but uh, sure I know there's will. a lot of other luminaries that are going to show up. Uh, I know that uh, Folk Uke will be there, uh, Amy Nelson, Kathy Guthrie, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so many others. Uh, Dr. Dre will be there, and uh, I mean, if I, if I, I'm going to skip them. So I, because I, I've seen the list. It's pretty impressive. It really is. I know that Alan White of uh, Yes, the drummer for Yes, and played with the Beatles on, on many songs, uh, helped us do the choosing this year, uh, as well as uh, Steve Fossen, the bass player from Heart. Uh, they were on our uh, our uh, crew to help pick the, the bands this year. So I, I'm sure wow. that you'll be very, very pleased about that and, and, uh, and the, the people they have coming in, uh, as well as the new uh, stage this year. We're going to have a comedy stage. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had a comedy stage and, and so, yeah, I love the, having the actual on venue you know they showed the yeah. the actual the venue. venue there but they mainly focused on the main stage mm -hmm. that's only like a like 10 20 percent of the old brawl that's correct area that that, yeah. that thing just covers a whole what about a mile and a half long this year we're offering you 20 percent more hemp fest we are right, 20 percent more have, property down at the other end of elliott bay is yes. being added in so five stages uh in fact from and when you're looking you see that picture of all those folks out there on main stage and i've been on main stage many times you gotta uh, multiply that it's, by about five times yeah it's something. 200 yards from where i stand on main stage to the first tent out there and you can see that there's just solid people solid mass when you see that picture so there's probably 75,000 people standing in front of me on main stage and that's just one stage out of five stages and then there's hundreds and hundreds of booths and uh uh just all kinds of entertainment going on everywhere and a information and, will be oh, had it's, by it's one a wonderful all, thing so to be at see you out there at uh, the seattle hemp fest yep yep come win a guitar you might as well somebody's going to get it we have a caller hello caller you're on the show Thank you. How are you guys doing? Excellent. This is Linda Hello, Mason. Oh, I'm hey, Linda. I'm calling to say that the people need to know. I've, I've been hearing a lot of moaning and groaning about PTSD not being one of the criteria to get a card. Mm -hmm. If you really want that card, you have PTSD, meet me at DHS on August 13th, and we yes. can discuss it with Oregon. Yes, August no, that's 13th. August 13th at yes. 800 Northeast Oregon Street, is that exactly. right? Exactly. Yes. And what time of day is that? It's, it starts, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it starts at 11 and it goes to 4. Mm -hmm. 11. You have an opportunity to, to tell them what you think that might yeah, be one of your you. illnesses that need to go on there. So is that August 20th that you say? August 13th. August 13th. Well, this is August 14th. Is August 14th. As we're 
Yesterday. Just, yesterday. Oh, wait, wait you're right. Wait a minute. That can't be right. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah, it was 13th. I was 13th. But we still have more coming up, so people need to go online. I think online. it's the 20th, August 20th. Oh, August yeah. 20th. Okay. If, that's if what I thought, to, too. If they want to, but that's a good day to go there, and they'll be able to talk to the people and tell them what they're thinking, and they will consider this. But we need more yeah. people to show up and speak up. I agree. Thank you guys for doing a good job. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, if you're out there, we might get another call or two in. Call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. If you're anywhere out there across the, the USA and you need help finding a doctor who can help you get medical marijuana in one of the states where it's legal, you can call us. We'll be happy to help. Uh, we have doctors in nine of the 13 medical marijuana states that can help you, and there's literally hundreds of them across the state of California. So if you need that help for chronic pain, nausea, seizures, spasms, AIDS, cancer, glaucoma, or any of the conditions that qualify in your state, call us at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. I always have to put that plug in there, you know. Right. So we, it helps quite a bit. How many phone calls you get a day on that on that line? Uh, about fifteen hundred a day right now. <laughs> yeah, about fifteen hundred a day, and we have a staff of about eighty people now all together. It's pretty amazing. We went from forty-six employees on January first to seventy-eight on July first, and we've added we're over eighty now. So keeps getting bigger and bigger. We have another caller, though. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Am I right? Am I wrong? Hi. I had a question. Um, I'm about to go into surgery, mm -hmm. and I want to know if smoking or vaporizing or, or eating cannabis is, is bad for me. Absolutely not. <clears throat> I know uh, that they said this not to stop smoking, but I think they meant cigarettes. Yeah. Do you have a medical <clears throat> marijuana permit? I do. The medical marijuana law specifically says that hospitals have to make accommodations for people who have a medical marijuana permit to use it. Now, I personally don't like coughing because, number one, if you've had surgery, every time you cough, oh, yeah. the incision place is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> and so uh, I, I can tell you from experience that every cough will send a wave of pain down through that incision. <laughs> So I would recommend eating cannabis. In fact, for pain and other conditions like spasms, seizures, glaucoma, neurodegenerative diseases, and gastrointestinal ailments, it works better to eat cannabis. Of course, you're not going to cough when you do that. And then I prefer vaporization over smoking. I just think it tastes better, makes the marijuana go farther, and uh, doesn't have that, that acrid, lingering, long-lasting smell that smoking does. And if I vaporize up into the surgery, it's not going to mess up the anesthesia or anything, No, right? it won't have any effect on that. Excellent. Thank you so You're much. You're going to vaporize in surgery? It'll help, oh. I think, you know. <laughs> I, I always did. I would eat something, too, you know. But actually, there, there's no contraindications with use of other uh, anesthesia or painkillers. Uh, oh. It won't... Uh, causes them to be more effective or any kind of detrimental effect there, as far Fantastic. as I know. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Good Thanks. question. Yeah, good luck with your surgery. We hope everything goes well for you there. So, gee, we might even get another call in the intervening two oh. minutes, but you just never know. Is there anything you'd like to say here, Paul? I know you're still working heavily with the Green Party and the yep. Pacific Greens. Pacific Greens here in Oregon, because um, we're, you know, the only political party that's you know, on the side of cannabis consumers. Yeah, exactly. Um, told out in front about we're not trying to, we're not afraid of it. We're not hiding behind something saying, oh, it's not time right now, is like a certain president says. Right. Um, <laughs> and makes jokes about us. Yeah, so, um, insulting jokes. I insulting might jokes. For those of you who are big fans of him, remember, he insulted each and every one of you. But, um, but, yeah, I'm out there, and I help patients all the time. I mean, I don't get the 1,500 calls a day in my office, thankfully. <laughs> right. but, but I get well, a lot I'll tell of, you, if you I, had 1,500 calls a day, you'd want a lot of people to answer that yes. phone. Yes, I get a fair number of calls from patients with, you know, asking basic legal questions. And they're afraid because and, and, uh, they just don't know things, and they have officers that intimidate them. 
Um, so I tell people, I was like, look, if officers are bothering you, just call me up when the officer's there and had, tell them to put the officer on the phone with me. Yeah. So I know you've done that in a yep. lot of cases, and it's always real helpful. I think you talk the police out of several oh, yeah. potential arrests yep. that way, which is a great thing. Stanford, does the term moco loco mean anything to you? Loco. Isn't that the Hawaiian word for marijuana? Pacalolo. Oh, no, pakalolo. Pakalolo, yeah. yay! Pakalolo, that's the Hawaiian <laughs> word for, for marijuana. That, uh, they use pretty heavily out there. And it's, uh, you know, marijuana used to be a big crop in Hawaii, but the feds cracked mm. down in yep. the mid-'80s, and they really cut back production, and organized crime's gotten hold of it. Now, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it used to be, there, marijuana was an export crop from Hawaii, oh, yeah. but now uh, marijuana is imported to meet domestic <laughs> needs in Hawaii. So uh, the trade has flowed the other way. But I'm looking forward to when marijuana is legal, then we can grow some good Hawaiian herb. It's very mm. difficult for patients in Hawaii. The law requires doctors do everything there. They have to keep the applications. The doctors have to turn in the applications to the state. Doctors have to pay the fee to the state. Then they send the card to the doctor, and the doctor has to sign the card and give it to the patient. Wow. And if the patient, if the state wants it back, they go to the doctor and tell the doctor to go get the card back from the patient. So it gives uh, uh, the Boy. doctors a lot of work. Yes. How many patients do you have in Hawaii? About, uh, uh, about 1,000 out oh. of the 4,000 that are there. We are actually up to right now closing in on 100,000 people. Yeah. Uh, mm. In terms that we've helped all across the eight states we're currently in and, and getting ready for nine. So we keep plugging along. Uh, also, for folks out there, we were going to restart our classes. We have had classes for uh, patients who are learning how to grow, so those will be starting back in October. So just call that number for more information. So, Paul, uh, we're down to our, our closing uh, moments here. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? No, but I mean, just that if um, if some of these shows are archived anywhere on it, yeah, the the Vancouver shows, those were some of our best ones, I think. That's true. When we went up and saw Mark Emery in yep. his early days, those yep. were were good ones. I think that was like show number forty five or fifty or something well, like that. Well, we had that. a couple of them we put together from up there. Yeah, I remember four or five of them yeah. in a row. It was a good string of shows, and yep. I I know some of them are, but uh, I really appreciate you coming back well, on after fun. all these years. And is there anything you'd like to say, Doctor Levesque? Well, I used to tell my patients, don't smoke in the rain, and a lot of them asked me, why not? And I said, you've been smoking the good stuff, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for watching. We're going to go out on the tunes of Mr. Tim Pate. Uh, this is show number 500. Next week on show 501, we're not going to do a live show. We're actually going to show clips from the Portland, I mean the uh, Seattle Hemp Fest. So tune in next week to see excerpts from the Seattle Hemp Fest and then we'll be back with a live show the following week. So uh, thanks for watching and here's Mr. Tim Pate and help us restore hemp. Yay! Good night.